Welcome to AFL Access. My name is Joel and today I'll be doing another part in the mid-season review series that we've got going on throughout the bye weeks. Ryan, Justin and I will be looking at two teams each and see how they've gone going into their respective bye weeks. Today I'll be looking at two teams that are probably going to be jet lagged as hell as they have just played in China and that will be Port Adelaide and St Kilda. So, just a quick uh, aside, these are just my like very brief thoughts on the league as a whole going into these bye weeks, and it's really been maddeningly inconsistent. Whether it be the umpires being just absolutely dreadful, most of their calls don't make any sense whatsoever, and that's not just coming from a Salty Crow support, I think most people see the umpiring as very subpar at the moment. But also just from pretty much teams 4 to 17 at the moment. Like I said, there's only four teams that I can think have been consist that have been consistent at any point this season. That is Geelong, Collingwood, GWS, and and the Blues in a well, obviously not so good way. But yeah, like most teams this year have looked really good in some portions and looked absolutely terrible the next week. But that's not what we're here to talk about. I just thought I'd uh, give you some context around some of my comments that I'll make on this video and subsequent videos. All right, so we'll start off with Port Adelaide. So Port Adelaide sits in seventh position with 110.9% uh, with six wins, five losses. Their top goal scorer is rookie Connor Rosie with 15 goals. So the positives of the power has been their, well, youth movement. Rosie is looking to be a really promising young player. Uh, Xavier Dersma and Zach Butters also look very solid. Rosie in particular looks like the closest challenger for Sam Walsh for the Rising Star. And yeah, in a couple of years it's going to be dreadful to see the Crows play against them because they are young, fast and hungry. Scott Lysette has been a fantastic pickup for the power as it really bolsters the ruck stop since Paddy Ryder is stunned to decline, especially due to age. He's also been a dynamic uh, forward, really mobile, has added a lot of depth to the team. Tom Rockcliffe, a huge get in the 2000, uh, 2017 offseason, has been dominating ball possession with 31 disposals per game. And as anyone can attest, as anyone who has seen Tom Rockcliffe play, if he's getting his hands on the ball a lot, he is going to help that team win. One per player who has been playing lights out, out of his skin, just some of the best form of his career, has been Travis Bope, who, again, like I think and many people say, is probably in Brownlow winning form, even though a lot of people are saying Tim Kelly's already got it wrapped up. I still think Boak, with his 31.2 disposals per game, has just been an absolute gun for the entirety of this season. Other players like Dan Houston, who has been a solid rebound halfback and small defender, has been averaging about 20 disposals per game and looks to improve on his good form over the past couple of years. Sam Palpepper has been an excellent offensive option up forward and also a menace in the midfield with a bit of grunt in his game that really makes it hard for opposition to really lock him down. The way Port has been going, especially with their 70 point win over the Saints tonight, they look poised to when they get their players back to be a real threat for the top eight. That being said, they still need to tighten up their opening quarters, which has been probably the biggest negative, negative for the team on the ground. Their first quarters have been pretty abysmal, especially against the Pies, Hawks, and, well, to a lesser extent, the Crows. Their slow starts have really handicapped their ability to get close in games, no matter how well they play after their fact. Prime example is against the Pies, where the Power scored 10 goals to 8 after quarter time. However, they conceded 7 goals 6 to only 2 behinds. Now, it doesn't matter how good you play... If you're that far in the hole, you're kind of stuffed. The Crows managed to keep Port out of the game until the last quarter where the Power kicked six goals of their own, but they were still way too far out of striking distance. That being said, they did have their opportunities. 
and if they took them, they probably would be much, much closer. With the Hawks, they were completely shut out in the opening quarter and didn't really look to get going at any points of the game. Also, missing a lot of opportunities also hurt them, and Hawthorne managed to win comfortably. Injuries to key players like Robbie Gray, Ollie Wines, Tom Jonas, and Ryan Burton have hurt the power in certain points. Now, in particular, Robbie Gray, I think, probably could have been the difference maker in the showdown. Robbie Gray would have been a difference maker as he'd scored 10 goals in the previous two showdowns and had just completely torched Adelaide's defences. I'm not saying it would have won them the game, but I would have been way more nervous about how we plan to shut him down. Ollie Wines and Tom Jonas, the new co-captains of the power, have struggled a bit, especially with injury, but, you know, if they find their form, I think Port should be in a good position. Well, the absolute drumming of the Saints means that they are in the top eight in seventh position. They're also looking quite comfortable going into a nice week off before they head out on the road to go to Fremantle first up. Soon they should be getting Charlie Dixon back, who would be a lovely uh, surprise and another addition to the forward line to help stabilize it and also being a dynamic playmaking forward. We'll just look at the run home at the moment, so their last couple games before the end of the season. So first up, after the bye, they play Fremantle and Perth. Then they play the Cats at home, the Dogs at home, the Showdown, which is technically a Crows home game. Then they play the Lions at home, the Tigers away, the Giants at home, Essendon away, the Swans at home, the Roos away, and finally, Frio at home. I think there are a lot of very winnable games for the Power, and some games that I think they should win if they are wanting to stamp their claim as top eight and maybe even top four if they're really, really lucky. But outside of that, they need to win probably like six or seven of these games to make it comfortably in the top eight. If I were to give a grade for the power, it would be a C+. In short, their parts at the moment are greater than the whole. That being said, if they start to galvanize and with guys like Dixon coming back into the team and their leaders standing up, they should comfortably make the top eight. Now we come to St Kilda. They are currently sitting on five wins and six losses. Their leading goal scorer is Tin Membry with 21 goals across his 11 games. Well, the positives for the Saints were they started the season like a house on fire, jumping out to a 4-1 and one record and sitting in second place after the f- round five. Their only loss was to Fremantle in Perth by only a mere five points, so signs were looking up that this team had finally broken through the glass ceiling. Also, this is despite massive injuries to key players like, like Jake Carlisle, Paddy McCartan, and Dylan Roberton. They were playing with absolute ferocious tenacity and intensity, the likes of which I had not seen since that game against the Bulldogs where they came back from 50 points from half time. Jack Stephen was being a great secondary leader on the field, showing poise and class when moving the ball. Jade Gresham was being a leading disposal getter with an average of 22 disposals per game and kicking a handful of goals along the way. Rookie draftee Matthew Parker had some highlight moments throughout his debut season, 11 goals for his trouble. Josh Bruce, returning to the side after a lot of injury in the past couple of years, has contributed 13 goals alongside Membry. Even though this might not sound like much for a guy of Josh Bruce's calibre, it's better to get his confidence back. The many Jacks that are a part of the St Kilda team were also performing very well and contributing admirably to the Saints' white-hot start. And now for the negatives. Well, injuries really started to stack up after week five. Jack Steven taking, deciding to take time off for his own mental health. Jimmy Webster, Captain Jaron Geary, and many others dealt with severe to nagging injuries in the past couple weeks, really weakening the team. After their loss to the Crows in round six, they lost the next three as well, really hurting the team's confidence, especially after a really strong and spirited start. Then getting blown out by the power in China and Jaron Geary, after returning from a pretty serious cork to his leg, has appeared to have broken his leg, so he's obviously going to be out for the rest of the season. Even with good performances in losing efforts, they still just couldn't get it done. The Crows managed to just kind of push away in the last quarter. The same with the Pies. 
I'm pretty sure at three quarter time it was only like 18 points and then Collingwood just slammed on a couple more goals to make it look a lot less competitive than it actually was. Another negative has been Dan Hanabry not playing a game yet for the team, which is concerning, but he has been in the VFL in the past couple weeks and should be back by the bye. Well, hopefully. The season at the moment seems to be sinking very fast at the moment and a lot of the youngsters are getting thrown in the deep end and they really can't deal with it at the moment and I'm not sure how Alan Richardson is going to steer the ship. So even with this doom and gloom, we'll look at the run home. First up, they play Gold Coast up in Queensland, which I don't think will be... I think it will be a pretty tough match because the Suns aren't just going to lie down and die against St Kilda. They play the Lions at home, the Tigers at home, the Roos at Marvel, which is technically a away match. They play the Cats in Geelong. Ugh. They play the Dogs at home, the D's at home, the Crows at Adelaide, Frio at home, the Blues at the MCG, and the Swans at the SCG. Now that is a pretty hit and miss. There are some games which I can definitely see them winning. But there might be some pretty bad beatings coming their way after the bye. My final grade for the Saints at this point in the season is a D. They looked pretty promising going into the season, but then completely fell apart after round six and looked to be in a really bad tailspin that they might not get out of. And unfortunately, probably not enough to get the number one pick because Carlton has been just that much worse. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please click like. Subscribe to AFL Access and hit the bell to stay notified of all new content. We've got a couple more coming your way. If you want to discuss football in more detail with any of the guys that are on the channel, uh, join our Discord and you can discuss games with us, live chat and all that good stuff. If you want to join our Facebook page, the link will be in the description as well and that would also keep you up to date. This has been your AFL Access.